In a world where we're often too quick to judge on appearances, focus on ourselves, or find ourselves in a rush, this show is a reminder to slow down. Takes This Change is a project that goes beyond the meals and happy hours and connects with the thoughtful human creators behind each experience. Lo and I will sit down and try and uncover what it is that connects all of us to the story of a life. Each of us is distinctly unique, yet we are all very connected. This is Taste Exchange. Welcome to our show. Jasmine is one of the sweetest, most caring people you'll meet. She has a love of family, community, and food, especially baked goods. And her donut game is one of a kind. From cooking with her grandma growing up to now being the pastry chef at Lee and Louise, where James Beard nominated chef and owner Greg Collier picked her specifically to join the team. Jasmine takes desserts to a whole new level. We know you'll enjoy this conversation as much as we did. pastry chef here mm -hmm. um, I would say I don't well part of the reason why I went into the pastry field is because I just don't like touching raw meat okay <laughs> so I was like I enjoy cooking I love eating but I just can't do this raw Started meat thing. in middle school high school I had a teacher by the name of Miss Carpenter uh, she was my I guess home ec teacher in middle school and then she also was my culinary teacher throughout high school. Okay. So I would say it's because of her uh, why I had an interest in culinary arts mm -hmm. and Johnson Wells in general. We had um, a young lady come and do a demo one day in one of our culinary courses. And I was just kind of like, that's what I want to do. I love food and I remember my grandma telling me, uh, since I like to eat so much, and I would literally eat everything that she would prepare. She was mm -hmm. like, Jasmine, you have to learn how to cook because I can't keep up with your appetite. <laughs> and I was like, okay, cool. So I knew that in school we had classes where we would prepare stuff, sorry, and we would eat. And so I was like, I'm gonna definitely do that. And Ms. Carpenter was kind of the person to say, hey Jasmine, you know, you're actually pretty good at this. Mm -hmm. How do you feel about doing it in college? And I was yeah. just like, why not? Yeah. So, and I went to Johnson & Wales for Bacon and Pastry Arts and Food Service Management. Uh, finished up about 2013 and I've been in like niche bakery since then. Mm -hmm. uh, my friend Oscar and Daryl, they end up working with him and the entire time that they're working with him, they're just like, Telling him like, hey chef, you know, we have a friend. She's a pastry mm. chef. I feel like you should meet her. But at the time I had a job, I liked it. So every time they brought it up, like, Jazz, you should really meet a uh, chef. I was like, ah, I'm eating whatever. <laughs> I was just pushing it to the it side. Wasn't, it wasn't your time. The so James Beard nomination happened and Oscar had called me and he was going crazy. And he was like, Jazz, you gotta hop on this train with us. And I, it was like seven o'clock in the morning or whatever, and I had just woke up, and I could hear them like celebrating in the back. And I'm like, yeah, yeah, tell them, tell them I meet them. <laughs> and that's kind of how that happened. I met with Chef, and we talked about it. And I think even then, it was more so he was kind of telling me like, you're okay, come on, I got it, or we got you. All right, he said he got me. I should be good. <laughs> I should be good. And so far. He's been right. Yeah. So I'm glad I came. It's cool to have someone that sees you for who you are and also what you can develop into to give you the confidence of like, hey, like I'm here, like backing you up. Yeah, no, it wasn't until our like yearly evaluation that he <laughs> he was like, you couldn't make bread for nothing. And I was like, ah, oh, I'm glad you didn't tell me that in the beginning. <laughs> I might have cried. But now you know, I took it, I was like, yeah, you know, he was right. I couldn't make bread, but yeah. I can now. Yeah. 
But no, if he would have said that in the beginning, I would have just like, I'm not taking this job. <laughs> <laughs> I appreciate the uh, honesty. He yeah. does not stray away from that. And I don't think anyone does, to be honest. Yeah. yeah. Here in this Yeah, environment. no one. We are very, uh, some of us are a bit more blunt than others. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but I feel like for the most part, we get all of our points across. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I think it's different when it comes from a place of love, mutual respect, and for the common goal of we want to be great. And, oh, yeah. Right? Versus like, get it together. You know, yes. like that's, it's, it's very, very different. different. Yeah. yeah. I enjoy the location. Like I love Camp North End. I love everything about being here. Yeah. So yeah. What is so special to you about getting this opportunity? Um, the representation definitely. Uh, and just kind of, not even kind of, having a boss be invested in what I would like to do and what, what I can do, what I can't do. Like just being invested in me as an individual outside of what I have to offer it within my job description. Mm -hmm. You know, because it's like I've showed up for jobs and it's only been, a, it was only a matter of, well, what can you do from six to two <laughs> and not well since you've accomplished everything we needed you to do from six to two now that that's done how can i help you become a bit better how can i help you get to your own personal goals or can i how can i help you in general right. so yeah yeah that like care actually yeah. caring about the human being not yes. the worker from six to two yeah i like that a lot here so yeah and you see it everywhere i feel like we have so many conversations. It can go from cartoons to <laughs> what business do you want to open in two, three yeah. years or, you know, I don't know. There's a wide variety of things, but I feel like with each question, each concern, it's always that caring, loving factor for the next person. Yeah. yeah. That's on our board, uh, a whole bunch of random stuff, nice motivational quotes, but I enjoy the socks. Okay. <laughs> Haiku of the week. Is yeah. it something that one of you writes or? Yeah, we take turns or like sometimes one of us will write a line and then the next person will come and finish it out or whatever. But um, I kind of just started it. I think one day it was just busy and I just wrote down something real quick. And I was like, I'm gonna share this with the kitchen. So then it turned into a collective kitchen <laughs> thing. Oh, I love that. Yeah. So I was like, we should do a haiku of the week. And every so often I'll share it on my Instagram and people chime in and stuff. So That's now the whole fun. kitchen is a part of it. That's really cool. Yeah. What an awesome sense of just it's community. And kitchen karaoke. <laughs> okay. There's is this on film? Mm, no. Okay. I don't think I have any of it on film, but Shay is the musical one. Yeah. Okay. She's always singing and dancing. I'm just Kitchen like. Kitchen karaoke. Oh yeah, it's the thing. We're actually creating something uh, worthwhile, worth the story, worth being heard, represented, represented well. Um, and maybe even challenge. Like, I think some of us kind of thrive off the competition mm -hmm. a little bit. I don't per se, but it's, I think some of the other people definitely do to just pull up our britches and get to work yeah. and be seen, but not to like showboat, right. to just demonstrate that there is a lot to be said here with everyone from, you know, Justin to our dishwasher. I feel like we all are here to get better, but to be better mm -hmm. and yeah, be one of the best restaurants in Charlotte. The country, because we're number two. Hi. Yes, <laughs> absolutely. And I was going to say, like, you guys are just taking it to a whole new level from a restaurant standpoint. Mm -hmm. Like, you're just elevating and really, I think, you know, innovating and, and helping to redefine the industry, which is really cool. Yeah, that's fun to be a part of. Again, a lot of trial and error. <laughs> But I enjoy it. Even tired, sick, frustrated, I I enjoy coming to work. And I can't say that has been the same for previous jobs. Right. So I'm always thinking because I have to to keep up with our boss. It's 
never, <laughs> never a quiet day. He's always going. Yeah, no. He'll come around the corner and be like, so I'm thinking about this dessert. I'm like, yeah. And I'll grab my phone, make a note real quick. Like, what is that? <laughs> what is he talking about? Because I don't always know, but I like the fact that I'm given a chance to do some homework yeah. and not always have to have an answer right then and there about how to prepare something. Um, trial and error for me has been <laughs> my key factor, I guess. Yeah. Because I've messed up a lot of things in here, but Chef has a way of kind of taking that bundle of stuff <laughs> and turn it into a masterpiece. And I'm like, yeah, I did that. <laughs> Maybe not on purpose, but yeah. I did do it. Yeah. So. But you know what, I think that's great. And I think everyone who becomes great at their craft, that's their story, right? Like everyone has trial and error. That's how you get to be great is like that pursuit of learning more and experimenting and it's not about oh i like did this perfectly it's like oh i learned a lot doing that oh yeah no oh, i i think i rarely have something come out great the first time and i think all of those mishaps were necessary to get to that final draft it's just like yeah mm -hmm. this is this is what rhythm money is <laughs> so i appreciate that What up? Tell me a little bit about your donut story. So you found that you love donuts. Yeah, so um, <laughs> I remember seeing a posting for um, a lady who wanted to start a donut food truck. And I was like, that sounds like a lot of fun. But at the time I was like, I've never made a donut outside of class. So I watched a couple of YouTube videos. I practiced at home. I was like, okay, I feel confident enough. I think I can apply for this position. And so I did and I got hired and from day one, I was just, I don't know. It just kind of grabbed hold of me and yeah. okay, I really enjoy doing this. I like the fact that you have this pretty simple canvas, but you can pretty much twist and turn it into anything, savory, super sweet or something in between. Um, and there I got to just experiment like crazy because she, I believe she was the first person to do a donut food truck here in Charlotte. So we hit the ground running and then eventually a brick and mortar came and that just put things into hyperdrive. <laughs> yeah. But from there, I was just kind of like, I see myself doing this on my own and kind of my own uh, interpretation of a donut essentially. So since then I've been working on my own recipe. Chef has given me the opportunity here to do, uh, I guess donut days or for donuts to be a part of the monthly pastry box. Mm -hmm. So each opportunity I get, I'm just like, okay, guys, how do you feel about this donut? Do you need, think I need to tweak something here? What about this flavor um, profile? Or one of the things that I appreciate here is that we do use seasonal ingredients, mm -hmm. which sometimes with a donut, you don't really see too often. You see like raspberry with sprinkles or vanilla glaze, chocolate. But here it's just, I've learned so much about other <laughs> vegetables and fruits that I can barely pronounce or even know how to prepare properly. And I'm just like, chef, you know, how can I take this and turn it into that? And that's one of the things I appreciate here. And I believe once I get it together, my donut game is gonna be crazy. Yeah. yeah. I'm sure it already is. <laughs> I fully believe this. Well, yeah. But I, I kind of like playing with the dough, if that makes sense. I like that it is simple. Like, well, it can be simple, but it can also be a bit more complex. Um, just the varieties that come with. I guess the donut itself, like you could do a yeast donut, you could do a cake donut, or it can be a sour cream old fashioned or a buttermilk old fashioned, or it could be a cake donut that's actually baked and not fried. I just kind of like learning all about that and what people like outside of what I might personally like. Mm -hmm. Some folks may not want a soft and fluffy one. Maybe they want something um, kind of like the apple cider donuts, which mm -hmm. are a batter and they're a little thicker and denser, but they're really good or equally as good. So, um, I don't know. Donuts just make me happy. <laughs> they make me happy, although I enjoy getting to experiment with other things here. Because Chef will be like, well, don't stifle yourself. <laughs> I'm not. I just know what I really like to do. Right. Um, 
But here he challenges, challenges me to explore outside of that as well. To you or to other people? To me, he's. I feel like he's been asking me that since I've been about five. Okay. Yeah, what are you passionate about? I don't know, candy. <laughs> and even at 30, it's like, what are you passionate about? But um, I would say just kind of understanding that everything has its own time mm -hmm. and not feeling so pressured or rushed by surrounding factors because all I can do is focus on myself and I guess prepare myself for how do I respond for when things happen and for when they don't happen. Because mm -hmm. people, we, I guess, romanticize the, the goal and once we get there, but we don't stop to think about how we're going to approach it when we don't and mm -hmm. when we fall short sometimes. But in the grand scheme of things, it all plays out when it's supposed to. And I feel like that here with my job now is it happened when it was when I was ready for it mm -hmm. because Lord knows I've been waiting for an opportunity like this. <laughs> I really have been. I enjoy my staff. I enjoy my bosses. Um, I enjoy the location. Like I love Camp North End. I love everything about being here. Yeah. So that's awesome. Um, what's one of the biggest like things that you've learned in your career? Challenges, things that you've personally come through that has helped define or shape you? Just time. Yeah, just time. And not rushing. Mm. Kind of being okay with creating my own lane because I think personally, I'm, I am great at what I do. I'm not even going to say good or anything because they're going to be like, good. That. No, I am great at what I do. And what I do is cater to who I am and mm -hmm. no one can replicate that it is a jasmine thing and I appreciate it I own it and everything that comes with it which is why <laughs> I have like my Instagram page is called confections of a Martian mm -hmm. and it's kind of a spin on Usher's confessions but I use it as a way to kind of just talk about my pastry journey you know, the good parts when my desserts turn out spectacular and the bad parts where it took me 56 times to get one thing right. I share it all on my Instagram page. I share my staff. I share um, my family because they influence that as well. And it's just what makes me the pastry chef that I am. Yeah. So I think that has been the most important thing is to not look at the next person and be like, oh, I want to try and do it like that. Chef is always like, why would you want to do it like that? Mm -hmm. That's that's not Jasmine. Like, yeah. do it the way Jasmine would do it. Right. Okay. <laughs> Let's figure that out. Yeah. So. yeah, I love that. It's very much about being inspired by something and making it your own. Yes. Because nothing that you really see is new. It's just, you know, someone took something and kind of added their own flavor to it. Yeah. Voila. Yeah. yeah. Well, when Aaron and I were talking about this the other day, that even though nothing is necessarily new, it's never come through you. So yes. there's something really special in that and yeah. what you're sharing and creating. Your own little, you know, razzle dazzle. Yeah. <laughs> razzle dazzle. Yes. So I like that I can do that here and it's, you know, not toned down mm -hmm. or, um, you know, too much. Yeah. So a part of the confections of the Martian my name is Marla the Martian. That's kind of my uh, alter ego. Mm -hmm. So, you know, Marvin might be like my big brother or something. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's great. We all need an alter ego. Oh, yeah. Yeah, she's, I don't know. She's something else. And she started in college, so you know those years. What's one? <laughs> we know. Uh, what's one thing that Marla the Martian, like, gives you? Confidence. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. She definitely gives me confidence. Like, girl, stop. You got this. Yeah. Because Jasmine will hide just like this. But Marla, you know, she'll sit pretty. <laughs> I think you're sitting very pretty. Well, thank you. Yeah.
if you had a superpower or you were a superhero, you can pick either. What what superpower would you have or what superhero would you be? Oh man. Oh no. <laughs> it doesn't have to be a real one. You can make it up. Hmm. Take as long as you want. I love superheroes and all that stuff. So what would I? Uh, I used to think Kitty from X-Men was kind of dope because she could walk through walls and stuff. Uh, <laughs> I don't know if I want to, don't take that one. <laughs> no, I don't know. So, I would want super speed. Mm -hmm. Just because being a baker or a pastry chef, you have to get to work ridiculously early. And I would love to be able to sleep until like, <laughs> 4.59 and then get to work at five. <laughs> That would be great. That would be love, yeah. Because I would do it. I would be in the store at five o'clock on the dot. Yeah. <laughs> that would be amazing. Yes. Yeah. Currently? Yeah. Other than donuts? Uh, yeah, like, or, 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 like, kind of donuts, like a specific kind. So I really enjoy making the Art de to be honest, which is a dessert in the, inspired by Chef's grandmother and his, no, by his grandmother, because she would eat oatmeal cookies and drink tang. How does the ginger get in there? I forgot how exactly the ginger gets in there, but the Art de is an oatmeal cookie crust and it has a tang custard and it's topped with a ginger meringue. And Chef, thought of this dessert because of the combination of things that his grandmother ate. So I like making it because of the story, but I'm also at a point now where I can like do it with my eyes closed. I'm like, yeah, Chef Grandma. <laughs> this is good, it's for you. <laughs> so I enjoy making that one. Um, I like a base, well, I really like a raspberry glazed donut with sprinkles. Mm. It just makes, For you to eat or to make? To eat, to yeah. make it. I don't know, something about it makes me, oh my goodness, it makes me so happy. And then I think of the Simpsons, cause they're all, there's always a pink donut in the Simpsons. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so that's one of my favorite donuts. Yeah. All right. Were you awkward? Were you awkward? I was awkward. Oh, okay. that's awkward. Yeah. yeah, no. No one of you is complete without <laughs> some awkward. Original glazed donut. Yeah, I'm still messed up tweaking my recipe, but I think today they came out great. Who's so good? Are you satisfied? I'm good. Super good. Okay. Eat that whole coma. Yes. <laughs> it was good, man. It was just like if she ever committed a crime, it would kind of be hard <laughs> to find out she was the most. I don't know how about that.